Hi everyone! Today we're going to paint a beautiful ethereal butterfly and a chive flower from my garden. I'm Diane and welcome to my studio where I paint with you every day. Remember to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of my daily videos. So let's get started. And the colours I'm going to be using today will be Conacridone Gold and Cobalt Blue which will give us our greens and also some of the colour in the um, chive flower. And then I've got um, Conacridone Purple here which will give us something close to the colour of the flower. Um, I might use a bit of um, Scheveningen Rose or uh, perm Permanent Rose or Opera, whatever um, version of that you happen to have. And uh, also um, this is Potter's Pink, which <coughs> I'll probably use that together with the um, cobalt blue in the butterfly's wings. So um, I'm using a reasonably small piece of paper today because that's what I happen to have handy. This is also ready stretched, quite smooth. It's uh, a light hot press paper, not too rough at all. And I could draw it in pencil and I could draw it in ink. Um, always difficult to decide actually which way to go, but I think I'll do it in pencil. And then if I uh, feel the need, I can always add the ink afterwards, can't I? So let's um, see how this is going to go. Okay, so we have a stalk that the flower of the chive is attached to. And then we're going to has a few leaves, which are famous chives that we eat. And then up here we're going to have the butterfly really quite close. So you just do him from the side. And this is a a very loose interpretation of a butterfly, mostly thinking about how you can't really catch hold of the wings visually or otherwise, so it's just a kind of blur. And then it will be all a matter of colour. So there we are. And so um, I'm going to start by painting the mauve in for the chai flower. This is going to be done in several layers. So I want to do this first so that this layer can start to dry. And then I'm going to now um, just drop in some Conacridone gold for the leaves and the stem. Um, then I'm going to put cobalt blue into that and let that just run. And we'll see how that um, moves if it's not uh, blended enough by the time that's finished moving. Gosh, the place smells of onions all of a sudden. But then we can um, add some more green. Just missed a little bit there, that should be. Uh, 
Okay. Um, now I'm going to take a bigger brush. This is a uh, number 11. That was a uh, number five, was it? No, seven. So I started off with a seven. This is a five, uh, 11. And I'm going to wet the area that is for the wings. This is a design that you could easily use for a birthday card or something like that um, because it's very quick. It doesn't take very long to produce something like this. A little bit of um, housekeeping here. I've mixed uh, yellow with the blue so I don't want the yellow in the butterfly because that's going to be blue and pink so I've had to clean that up but now I'm back to my proper blue cobalt and I'm just going to drop the colour in along the line nearest to the body And then I'm going to pick up a little bit of Potter's Pink. And Potter's Pink being a granulating colour, it might give some interesting effects. But it really does smell one and two all of a sudden. I'm going to do some dots and dashes up here. And maybe a little bit of permanent rose mixed in with the pink to emphasize pinkness. Maybe a little bit of mauve. Now I'm just thinking to give this a little bit more texture, now I'm, I am improvising as I'm going along, as you know I tend to do, so I'm going to drop some salt, fine kitchen salt, just into the wings there, and then see what happens as that dries, because I want to give the wings texture. So I won't be able to paint in that for a minute, I'm going to have to let that dry. But I should be able to do a little bit more here in the um, in the chive, so using a nice sharp A sharp pointed brush.
So to get the effect of the different petals on this chai flower, you want to do them shorter where you're looking at them more straight on. So even some dots like that. And then as you go around to the edges, they're going to be a bit longer. You want to keep one side a bit lighter than the other side, because obviously the light's coming from one side mostly. And then as you go along, you're going to just drop in a few. I've only used one color here, just the, the uh, quinacridone purple. I'm not going to add anything else to that, I'm just going to leave that as one colour. So like that. And uh, for the purposes of this kind of painting, I think that's probably enough. We don't want to make it look overworked. So we'll see how that looks when it's dry. And I have to wait now for the... for the... Um, butterfly to dry. I think. I've never done this before. This is new, experimental. Painting into salt. We'll see what happens. Oh, I'll tell you what I can do while I'm waiting for it to dry. I can just do the, the body of the um, butterfly. And the question is, do you, do you make it uh, black or do you do it grey or somewhere in between. I'm going to do elements of it just in black like this. And uh, because this paint is quite, this uh, brush is quite fine, I can probably manage to drop in the legs. I'm just going to hint at the body. There we are. And uh, I'll draw his antennae in shortly with a pen. So I am going to let that dry and then come back and take the salt off. Okay, so that's dry and what I've done is I've brushed the salt off of the butterfly's wings and you can see now the texture that's appeared there. I think you can see that. And just to prove that the salt sucks up the colour, there is a little pile of salt that I've brushed off of here and it's gone pink looks like Himalayan salt now because it's pink. I don't know what that makes you think. But anyway, um, yeah, so that sucked up some of the colour in the places where the salt grains were sitting and it's left us with this rather cool texture. So I shall now get rid of that salt. Now this is really a case of um, playing around here and just enjoying yourself um, constructing something that you think is pretty and um, trying not to spoil it by going too far with any of the colours or making it dark by mistake. So I'm just going to do exactly that, I'm going to try. Maybe it needs a tiny touch of yellow in one or two places, like that. I'm going to use a little bit of sap green, I think, on the um, on the stems and the leaves of the chives, mixed with um, probably a little bit of yeah, a little bit of mauve purple. 
to make it a little bit more um, grassy green sort of colour and then I'm just going to put in the shadow side. In other words, just giving a little bit more structure without going too far. Because we don't want it to be unbalanced, do we? We want the lightness of the butterfly to be um, balanced evenly with the... We don't want this to be too dark, in other words. And I think that texture is really nice and I, I want to add to that. I'm going to use a bit of spatter and um, I think we will use Potter's Pink spatter, shall we? And then I'm going to bring that over the top and around the bottom. And then maybe, 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 maybe a few um, few spatters of blue. And then with a wet brush I'm just going to soften some of those spatters on the actual butterfly, but I'll leave that. So there we are, there's the final painting of the butterfly on the chive. Hope you enjoyed that and I hope you give it a try. Subscribe, share, please do everything you can if you enjoyed this to help us to uh, grow the channel. And I will say goodbye for now, and I'll see you again soon, probably tomorrow most likely, all being well. So bye-bye everyone, bye-bye.